Hi, my name is Cameron Carlson with AnimeOnLocation.tv. I'm here at ColossalCon 2018 with my good pal, Mr. Charles what Dunbar. Up? What up, what up? Whoop, whoop. <laughs> it's another year, another ColossalCon. Again, so, again, we haven't seen you since last year. How have you been? You know, I've been, this is, uh, it's been, it's been a blitz, uh, because of course it has. And um, I've been joking about how this is like my third consecutive week at a con, and for the first time ever, I didn't go home in between shows. Whoa. I went from Toronto to here. Oh, that's right, yeah. And uh, it's it's interesting, it's weird, because I never get to be a tourist. And this year I've actually had a chance with some of the shows, I've been doing a lot of Wizard World shows, I actually get to be a tourist. And I go places and I get to see stuff. And I miss that, because like I used to love going to cons with my friends, because it was always like, let's go take a look at Jamestown, let's go look at Yorktown, let's go yeah. kick my friend into like the Williamsburg Pond. We used to do <laughs> things like crazy stuff, and now it's like, this year I've been having a chance to do it, in between generally going and same. Actually, I've been to Yorktown. Yorktown's gorgeous. I love it. It's, it's actually my favorite of the three. Yeah. Because I went down there for the uh, for the national park. Oh, I, I just that was post NecoCon for many years. Like one year in 2007, we went to uh, we went to Jamestown, uh, and I bet my friend $500 to take a bite out of a dead catfish. <laughs> and then the next year, we went to Williamsburg and found it too commercial. And then the next year after that, uh, we went to uh, Yorktown, and I have video of like the mist rising off the ground, and it looks like something out of a sci-fi war movie. I yeah. loved it. I love to travel. I mean, my first, uh, when I went to Anime Boston in 07, I was like breaking my con out. The first thing we did on the day after the con was we drove to Salem. Yeah. <clears throat> just to go to Salem. Yeah, it's a cool town. Yeah, it is. I've been there because they have the Salem Maritime National Historical Park there, too. We just so. wanted to go because of witches. Yeah, most people do. So, again, you had the chance to go back to Japan. Yep. Uh, what was it like to go back there and learn more about the people and culture? See, this time, unlike the last time, I didn't have anything planned. It was just going to happen. And sometimes you need to do that. The first time I went, I spent way too much time trying to break in the culture angle and the history angle, and I lost sight of just enjoying myself. Uh, I landed during uh, Typhoon Lamb, which was the largest typhoon to hit the South Pacific last year. <laughs> so, of course, everyone was at Akihabara or the Shrine because it was naming festival weekend. I think it was the age three naming festival because all the kids had their kimonos on. And I just, you know, I just enjoyed it. I stayed in a business hotel and... Uh, uh, it agreed college dorm and it was awesome and then I went to uh, I just went up to Sapporo and I experienced the joys of Sapporo I mean it was good to go to Japan without an itinerary this time just because now I could do what I want and what I wanted to do was enjoy myself and I climbed a couple of mountains I didn't do any real festival stuff I didn't do any like I went to the, went to the Parasite Museum in Meguro. That's pretty fun to look at, but ultimately it was just me just having fun and enjoying myself and actually touring Japan instead of taking notes on Japan. Yeah. Sounds like you had a really good time, man. I'm kind of jealous. So um, you had talked about being a little bit older now and having to get yourself physically fit for cons. What routine do you think you would say was like good for keeping you healthy all this time? Well, the one I'm using right now, I'm trying something new to keep my back from inflaming. I do, uh, I, I do about 50 to 70 push-ups a day, but I break them out over the course of hours. So instead of doing them all at once, like I'll wake up in the morning, I'll do seven, then I'll do like five, then I'll do ten, and I space it out. So far, so good. Uh, I did cut down on the amount of food I'm eating. I'm not drinking anymore. Uh, that was just, that, that really helped. And on top of that, it's just... I do a lot of running, um, I do a lot of cardio, and so far so good. I mean, the problem is when you're at a con, you're eating like crap. Yeah. And when you're at a con, especially like Colossal, you're drinking a lot. So I've had to moderate things, and it's ended up helping, but that doesn't change the fact that like my, the older I get, the more my body starts to slow down. And, yeah. and, and when you consider I've been doing this for 10 years, yeah. over 10 years, I remember days where it's like, oh man, I'm fine, I can just do whatever I want, I'll yeah, bounce yeah, yeah. back by tomorrow. Now it's like, oh my god, my throat is starting to hurt. But the thing is, it's Saturday, and I only have two panels left. But this is with using a microphone. So it's like, I gotta, I gotta ration myself so my throat doesn't like die on me in the middle of my last panel tonight. It's hard, but like, you just gotta be aware of what you're eating and what you're, what you're putting out. I say I've been doing them for 10 years as well, so I get what you're saying. It's, it takes a lot out of both of us, and the more you get older, the more it slows down. So you still like to go to colleges and give some speeches. What college has been one of the most welcoming and more most informed college to give a speech at? Recently I did Pitt. Um, I went out and did a talk at Pitt during Teco Weekend, and I cobbled it together from all three of my Cool Japan lectures. And rather than it being a straight-up talk, we actually were just sitting there having a lovely little well a lovely little well-rounded conversation just about what they had been studying about animation diaspora and it was a really interesting talk i also i've discovered a lot of colleges this year have just been bringing me out because they just want me to scream <laughs> and i'm like okay 
Uh, are you sure? Yeah, whatever you want to do, just have fun with it. Uh, but the one, the talk at Pitt was really great because I, I come back. It's like the night before Teco. I come back to my room and I'm still online chatting with them on Facebook Messenger for like an earth, a further three hours, and that was pretty cool because it, they they really wanted to talk and discuss more and. That's the kind of thing that I enjoy. That still gives me a lot of a lot of strength and a lot of like, a lot of like, uh, what's the word? Enthusiasm. Yeah. Hey man, like I said, I enjoy it whenever I get to hear you discuss uh, poetically and uh, philosophically about topics. So you happened at one point write an article for Playboy magazine. I what was it? Like? Two. Okay. So I what was two it? Two articles for Playboy. So what was it like writing two articles for a world-renowned magazine like Playboy? It literally was their old, um, their old uh, video game, their old video game uh, guy. He was just looking for writers, and I just threw two pitches at him, and he just said, "Just do it." And that's pretty much all it was. It wasn't even like, "Oh, I have to go through this screening process." He's just like, "What's your idea? Do you have some samples? Here you go. Have fun." Like I've written for a few magazines before, and Playboy actually was the easiest because they were just looking for clickbait. Oh, okay. And my articles were essentially clickbait, but I didn't mind working on them because it was kind of fun. Just yeah. it was just like saying, "Hey, I wrote for Playboy," yeah. and on the day they were published, people actually were reading Playboy for the articles. They truly were. They truly were. Lauren Orsini made that joke uh, when she uh, tweeted it out with her otaku links, and I'm like, "Yeah," but it's like it wasn't like any different than writing for anyone else. I mean, it's not like they have a certain template you have to stick to. They just wanted the article, and I wrote it, and it went out, and that was it. Uh, what was the feedback like when uh, fans got the chance to read those articles? You know, I never noticed. Um, I, I'm I'm kind of internet shy. I don't like going online uh, unless I'm like watching wrestling videos or <laughs> browsing what's coming up with like video games or D and D. So I really have no idea what the fan response was, but it got something like a million clicks. Whoa. So I guess that's good. <laughs> yeah. I'd say still a million clicks is pretty good, and nothing I do does gets that much. So you mentioned that you had a bit of your books coming out, which I think uh, you were talking about. One of them was was going to be new for the, from last year to this year. So yeah, one, two, these are the new ones. So at this point, I'm now putting out four books within like a, within like a year period. I wait until an old one goes out of print to put out a new one. So like this one took out the Pokemon mythology book last year. This one took out uh, Goddesses and Sacrificial Kings, which I hated because I loved that book. <laughs> this one took out Basic Yokai Gaku. And this one is the newest one that came out in time for Christianity in Japan. But I still have Basic Yokai Gaku on the table because I was doing my monster lecture this weekend. Oh, uh, okay. And there's like a process now. There's like a process to writing these. And I just have... Uh, I, 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 it's a lot easier for me to write them than it was years ago when it was like, oh my God, is this going to work? How am I going to make this happen? Now it's become infinitely easier to get the books out because I usually have my thesis in my hand. Like I wrote the Christianity book in like eight days because I knew exactly what I wanted to say, how I wanted to say it. And it, I literally was reciting a lot of the things I say in my lecture and I was being able to go off on tangents and explain the concepts more and doing all, I love footnotes and endnotes, footnotes. So I have a ton of footnotes in there and I have a ton of bibliographies in there and I, I kind of enjoy it. So I got a new one that I want to put out for Oticon based on my American anime, the ultimate oxymoron panel that I just gave. <laughs> and uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to make that work because I'm, I'm envisioning that as a collection of just essays and ruminations because I've been an anime fan for 25 years. Yeah. So I'm looking at essays and ruminations on how how to best uh, just approach it through my own experiences. I mean, it's awesome that you got four new books out there. That's cool. So again, you've come back to Colossal Con. What makes it so much fun to come back here and be a guest for multiple years? Water park. Simple answer. I'm not. I'm not lying. This con. This con is the water park. It's the people in the hall. It's the laid back atmosphere. There's like when I do cons on on like like Otakon or Katsukon or Anime Boston, I'm doing it for uh, the educational. Purpose. I'm, I'm there to teach, I'm there to instruct, I am there to participate in that deeper appreciation of fandom. I come to Colossal Con to appreciate being a fan. Yeah. Because um, I give my educational talks, I mean, uh, the one I just did on American Anime, I have no name, how, idea how many seats are in that panel room, but uh, there are a lot of them and three quarter of the seats were full, so <clears throat> that is great. But this con is a celebration of fandom. Not a celebration of anime fandom, it is a celebration of fandom so you got the guys playing music in the hall you've got last night we had like a ska band playing down the hall you had the pro wrestling this is just anything that you could do to appreciate your time here colossal con gives you and i love that because sometimes that's just what i need i just need to enjoy myself 
and I come out of Colossal enjoying myself. Last week was a work con. It was uh, education con. Uh, next week, Anime Next for me is a very much an educational con because me and Zach Davison get to go at it about whatever. And then this week is the fun con that I'm at specifically just to enjoy myself. And that I like. That I need more of. I think a lot of us need those types of cons as well. Um, so again, what upcoming projects do you have in the pipeline that you want fans to know about? You know, that's what I'm looking for, actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm plotting my third my third trip to Japan for the Snow Festival, and I want to do some stuff on that. Um, my Blitz is going all the way through now to Colossal Con East, and then what I wanted to do is a number of my fans have ordered my Kill a Kill book, and I'm finally going to finish it. Um, it's not like I have that much to do. I just have to rewrite, rework, and do review a few things. So since my fall is looking to be a little bit light... I'm going to spend my fall working on the Kill a Kill book and getting that out by the end of the year. And then next year, I'm scaling back to about 15 conventions total from like 25, 30. And I'm going to just do my, I'm going to do like quality over quantity for the, for the next year. And we'll see where it goes from there. Right. And uh, where can fans keep up with you online? And a message for those fans that have been able to come to all your panels and enjoy them. Oh, those guys are awesome. Uh, my YouTube, uh, no, not my YouTube. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel called Tengu Talks, but I never have time to update it because I'm always at cons. Uh, my Twitter handle changed to Tengu Talks yes. because uh, I got tired of being an anime guy, and I like Tengu. Uh, Study of Anime is still the Facebook, so you can still find me on there. But lately, I've just been like, I've been easing off of the online because it's just, I want to like reconnect with like my passion, yeah. and it's been a little hard this year. Because it's been one con after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. So I need to reconnect a little bit. I need to have some me time. I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons again a lot. And it's just giving me the me time that I need. And what, what, what would you like to say to your fans that have been able to come to your panels and enjoy them? Keep coming. I mean, <laughs> you, it, the people, they enjoy it. I mean, a lot of people just keep stopping me in the hall and telling me how go to, what a good time they're having. I'm like, you know, that's the point. A lot of times I don't get that. A lot of times certain fans like don't want to bother me or they want to be super respectful. No, if you want to scream when I show something you like in a panel, do it. If you want to tell me that you're having a great time, please let me know. Because uh, this is why I do these things. I do it for the community. If I didn't enjoy the community, I wouldn't do it. So I like the fact that I have a lot of people that come back year after year. That's what makes it fun. All right, Charles, thank you again, my friend, so much for coming out and talking with me. Thank you so much. And I'll probably see you next year at this point. It's becoming an annual tradition now. It is. Well, this is the first consecutive Colossal Con I've ever done. I did 13, 15, 17, and this is the first time I've been here on consecutive years. Yeah. So this has been uh, a lot of crazy fun. Well, we love having you, buddy. Um, thank you so much. Thank you.